Somehow, the iPhone 8 is now nearly 6 years old and is the cheapest way to get the latest version of software, iOS 16, being around $130 USD. And so, is it a bargain or is it a bust? Let's find out, starting with the design. And by the way, timestamps are in the description if you'd like to see something specific. So in terms of design, the iPhone 8 is about as generic as an iPhone gets, and you can easily recognise it as an iPhone. It's the classic look with the home button, massive bezels and glass back, and it's quite easy to confuse it with the iPhone 6, 6s and 7, and is basically identical to the second and third generation SE. Although this was the first iPhone to have a glass back for wireless charging, as opposed to the iPhone 7's metal rear. Yes, this design is quite dated at this point, but it doesn't look bad in any way. It's still pretty sleek and somewhat stylish, and the build quality, as you'd expect from an iPhone still feels very good. And I mean, you're still getting some modern amenities, like of course wireless charging, water resistance, and stereo speakers. Plus, it's not a bulky phone at all. The 4.7 inch screen size, weight of 148 grams, and thickness of 7.3 millimeters are also in that sweet spot where it's not too big and not too small to hold with either one or two hands, and fitting it into your pocket is really easy. Of course though, if the 8 is too small for your liking, you can always step up to the larger 8 Plus, which has a 5.5 inch display size, but in comparison is much more cumbersome and a tad more expensive, but it's better for viewing content and seeing things more easily, along with a few other benefits which I'll cover in a bit. Most notably though, it's the last big home button iPhone ever made, so that kind of puts it in a whole nother category to the 8, as the 8 Plus is the best phone you can buy if you like both the large size and the home button. But speaking of that home button, quite a lot of people still prefer it over the gesture system even 5 years later. Plus, it also packs in Touch ID, which still works really fast, there's no delays in recognising your fingerprint. So all in all, its age is anything but subtle these days, and it's far from the most out there design, but you also have to consider that that was kind of the point here, as in the 2017 iPhone launch event, the iPhone 10 was the star of the show with the new all screen design, with the iPhone 8 being the watered down mainstream model. And you can not only see that in the design, but in the display as well. I mean, the iPhone 8 didn't and still doesn't have a bad display at all, and it does just fine for non-techy people, but it's nowhere near a terrific panel that blows anything out of the park. It's a 4.7 inch 60Hz LCD panel, with with a resolution of 1334 by 750 along with a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. This means that while the screen is sharp enough, it's not going to turn any heads. The 720p resolution won't be as crispy as more modern displays, it's only LCD, not OLED, so you won't be getting those deep true blacks, and it's pretty darn tiny to consume content on, especially thanks to those enormous bezels. Like I said though, it still does the job, and these drawbacks don't really matter to the average non-techie person. And even if you do care about tech specs, it's really not the end of the world. You can't see any individual pixels from a normal viewing distance, so things will look sharp enough. The only valid problems I'd have with this panel compared to modern day smartphones are 1. The tiny size of it, and 2. The massive bezels, which both combine to make a not so immersive viewing experience when watching movies or playing games. So if that's a real bother for you, then again, stepping up to either an all screen iPhone or the 8 Plus might be a better option, as both will be more immersive. Plus, the 8 Plus is capable of showing full 1080p HD content instead of just 720p like on the 8. Nonetheless though, the 8's display still gets you from A to B. It doesn't have any kind of fancy technology like a high refresh rate or OLED in like today's handsets, but it's a perfectly acceptable quality, especially if tech specs aren't something you're into. Oh, and one more thing, this display also has 3D touch, which is pretty extinct nowadays, but you can hard press on the screen to get things done quicker or to preview things. I do miss it. Now let's take a look at the camera setup, which like the display, still does the job, but it doesn't go anywhere near above and beyond. On the rear we get a single 12 megapixel lens, and then on the front a 7 megapixel selfie camera. Photos taken on the main lens are still of decent quality, it'll capture your memories just fine, and is great for the odd scenery shot too. In fact, in really good lighting, the 8 can still capture some rather stunning results, but it has to be perfect outdoor lighting, as the lens on here is tiny compared to iPhones nowadays, so it won't be able to get nearly as much light in, and as a result, indoor shots are going to be grainy and blurry to some degree. Also, the 8's camera lacks a lot of modern features, like night mode, which allows you to capture super clear detail in dark places without using the flash. And considering how good it is, it does make the 8 feel quite behind. And plus, portrait mode can only be found on the 8 Plus, which has a telephoto lens as well as the main one. And the telephoto lens also allows you to zoom up to two times without losing the quality in the image. So the 8 Plus does have a better setup, although the main lenses are exactly the same thing. All you're getting with the 8 Plus is 2x optical 
optical zoom and portrait mode, but I mean, you know, just for capturing memories, even though it's noticeably worse than what we have now, honestly, the 8 is fine for a lot of people, especially for the price too. And it's pretty much the same story with the selfie camera. It's really not great, and it won't stack up well to modern selfie cameras, but it's not an objectively bad camera. It's fine, you can see enough detail, but if you're an avid photographer, your mind isn't going to be blown. Now, the 8 was actually the first iPhone to be able to record video in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, which was pretty impressive for its time. Like the photos though, video is a bit of a step back from what modern smartphone cameras can do, especially indoors, but footage on here is still perfectly fine. And so again, for those who aren't too concerned about stuff looking absolutely perfect, you know, it's going to do just fine. Something else that's going to do just fine is the performance, which is still surprisingly solid after 5 years. The iPhone 8 has the Apple A11 chipset, along with 2GB of RAM. And while that RAM does sound very low by today's standards, the chipset keeps things running well. So a lot of, but not all things are going to be lag-free and smooth. You can watch YouTube, scroll TikTok, play light games, and browse the web without any hiccups or trouble. But intensive games or running a lot of things in the background can cause slowdowns and at the very least, drain the battery fast and heat up the phone enough to fry an egg on it. But if you're no power user and light everyday activity is all you want to do, then there's really no reason to be concerned about performance because it's going to be a pretty smooth and seamless experience for the most part. And it should stay that way for quite some time. Now, when it comes to how long the iPhone 8 will remain usable for, this phone still has quite a bit of life left in it despite already continuing to stay supported for the past 5, nearly 6 years. Although, the iPhone 8, as well as the 8 Plus and 10, will be next in line to be cut off after the iPhone 7 and 6S lost support late last year. Currently, the 8 runs the latest iOS 16 and, as I mentioned before, is one of the oldest iPhones to do so. So for now, you've got all the latest software features, and while Apple doesn't disclose it, it's probably safe to bet that the 8 will get updates until probably 2024 or 2025, and then remain usable for a few more years after that before its final software version becomes too obsolete for most apps. In the past few years, we've seen a trend of no iPhones being cut off for a couple of years, but then two iPhones released a year apart will lose support at the same time. So I'm thinking the 8, 8 Plus, and 10 will possibly lose support at the same time as the following 10R and 10S in 2025 or 2024. Of course, these are all my estimations, nothing is official, and there is a good chance I'll be wrong, but based on what we've seen recently, this is what is likely to happen in my opinion. So it depends whether you trust me or not. So long story short, you should still be able to get a couple of more years of use out of the 8 support wise, and you can keep using the phone as you would after support drops for a bit longer, but it's not a phone you'd keep for like 3 or more years from now. At this point, it's going to be a lot more of a temporary phone. Exact same situation goes for the 8 Plus by the way, it'll get cut off at the same time as the 8. And lastly, touching on the battery life, the 8 doesn't really do so well anymore. It's got a pretty small 1821mAh cell, and so battery was never terrific to begin with, and with the batteries inside these phones degrading over time, nowadays it's hard to find a used example with a battery that'll get you through the day with anything more than light use. I mean, even if you replace the battery, the older chipset can struggle with the modern software efficiency-wise, so it won't make that much of a difference. Basically, if you plan to use your phone for long periods of time, or even for normal periods, the 8's battery will likely give you a hard time. However, because the 8 Plus is a bigger phone, it has a bigger battery that will last longer. Although, not really that much longer, but you know, still longer. But either way, you're not going to want to stray too far from a charger. And so, with everything considered about the iPhone 8, it's pretty clear that it's not a top-notch experience anymore. And while it's usable by all means, its lack of longevity, unreliable battery life, and what other options at a similar price point offer really hold it back from being worth buying. Although, the 8 Plus could be worth buying if you like having the home button and a big phone, because that's the last and best iPhone made with both of those things, so it's kind of in a different category to the 8 altogether. It's a niche phone as well as a budget phone. But compared to what else is out there at this price point, the 8 and even the 8 Plus's value for money is pretty unappealing. For only around $50 to $150 max more, you could get yourself a 2020 or even 2022 iPhone SE, which while having the same design and display, sports much upgraded internals with a faster chipset that will last longer on software updates and improved cameras and battery life. And this is definitely one of the best value phones of the year. Although, because it's got that small design like the 8, battery is pretty mediocre, but you know, everything else about it is an absolute steal for that price. In addition, you could also get yourself a 10, 10R or 10 for less than a couple hundred more, which all have the all-screen design and much improved internals, although except for the 10, which has pretty much the same internals as the 8. But you know, compared to all this, the 8 is honestly really bad value for money, and if you can spend just a little more, then you'll get yourself a much better investment that'll serve you well for longer. If you're currently using an 8 or 8 Plus, you don't have to upgrade just yet as software support continues, but if the battery or cameras aren't doing you justice so much anymore, then it wouldn't be a bad idea to, although if not, then you know, by all means, keep using it.
it. But value for money aside, the iPhone 8 has held up impressively for a 2017 smartphone, and for a lot of people, it's still doing the job. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to Textbury for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Textbury, and I'll see you as always next time.